Good evening. Bwana Yesu wasifiwe. It's wonderful to see you tonight. We we're glad that you have joined us to continue studying God's word together. We had uh, technically uh, stopped somewhere when we ended uh, Second Samuel, but we'll see that we're not necessarily getting into a totally new book, but we are con. Continuing with the story. Uh, and now we get to the story of the kings, the kings that would come after the death of David and Solomon, and then after Solomon, the divided kingdom. And we'll see that unfold and then. Later in the Chronicles, we'll be given a, a little bit of some history and details. But all these things, they come together to just remind us of the faithfulness of God, how he's dealt with people in the past, how he's dealt with us, and how great he is. So basically, even today, we are going to talk about the king's mercy. Our king is merciful. He has been merciful from the very first day of our time. And we see that play over and over and over and over as we get into his word. So the first, uh, the, the first half of the kings traces the life of uh, Solomon, Davidson. And under his leadership, Israel rises to the peak of her size and glory. Solomon's great accomplishment, including the unsurpassed splendor of the temple, which he constructed in Jerusalem, brings him worldwide fame and respect. However, Solomon's zeal for God diminishes in his later years as pagan wives turn his heart away from worship in the temple of God. And as a result, the king with a divided heart, leave behind a divided kingdom. And so we'll see all this unfolds as we, we, we forge through and study God's word. Let us pray together as we, before we read his word. God, we thank you again for the privilege to be found before your presence. We Ask for your mercies. You have been so merciful. You've been gracious to us, Lord. And we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word that is before us. We pray that as we open to read it, that your Holy Spirit will be at work in us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to try and go as far as we can. Now, King David was old, advanced in years, and they put covers on him, but he could not get warm. Therefore, his servants said to him, Let a young woman, a virgin, be sought for our Lord the king, and let her stand before the king and let her care for him and let her lie in your bosom that our Lord, the King, 
may be warm. So they sought for a young, for a lovely young woman throughout all the territory of Israel and found Abishag, the Shunammite, and brought her to the king. The young woman was very lovely, and she cared for the king and served him, but the king did not know her. So before, before David actually dies, there, there's one more drama. <laughs> Uh, of late, his life has been uh, yeah, a lot of drama and a lot of things unfolding. But here also we see, you know, we'll realize that David, as the Bible says, that uh, he was very old, advanced in years, and they would try to put a lot of blankets on him, but he was still freezing, he was still cold. And, you know, men are wonderful. There are some guys who give a very wonderful idea. <laughs> we know how this is going to work, okay? Just chill. You've tried blankets. They're not working. This duvet's, duvet blanket is not working. We have a way out for you. We're going to find a beautiful young woman for you. That good? <laughs> Did, David did not even oppose it. This idea seemed very good, very well. And you know, the idea was given by who? Men. I, I doubt if a woman would have given this idea. <laughs> I, I doubt, but this is, don't judge us. <laughs> this man gave a very wonderful idea here for, for David. But um, as the Bible talks about his advanced years, it's only 70. The Bible tells us, you know, he died at the age of 70. And, you know, right now we have people who are 70 and you, you, you still see them walking around. Some of them are still strong. If you hear people are, you know, 90, 100, you're like, yeah, they've been stricken by years in age. Uh, they should rest, perhaps. But think about the life that David has gone through from his teenage, you know, before the Lord called him while he was in the wilderness taking care of the sheep. He was a very young boy, a teenager, walking in the field. And when the Lord called him and actually when he was anointed, he was still a teenager. So the whole of his life has been up and down, you know, working and fighting and th these things will leave your physical body wrecked very soon, you know. You, you always working too hard and no time for rest and all these things are happening. You, you would understand why, you know, the Bible said um, it's very advanced and they try to cover him and, you know, the system is not working. And then they found a very lovely young woman, a virgin. They brought her to David, Abishag, the Shunammite. She was brought before the king to serve the king, of which she did that very well. But mark the... Second half of verses four. And she cared for the king and served him, but the king did not know her. Already you guys know what that means. The king did not have any relationship with this uh, young woman. She did not go into her. She only served the purpose to which she was brought. And actually by this time in their culture, this was not something that would be alarming, uh, people would be wondering, how, what, what did you guys decide? What did you guys do to the king? They did this to very many other people, so it was not the first time. And Adonijah, the son of uh, Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared 
for himself chariot and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. Just like Absalom did. You know, every politician, this is what they will do. Always you'll have, you know, these super bikes and uh, vehicles going before they show up, creating a show, uh, announcing their presence that, hey, the Buanam Kubwa is coming, so you guys be aware. Um, and this is what he's doing here. Adonijah is um, a son of David. They say he's a fourth son in terms of age. And most likely, um, he think he's supposed to be the king because he's older than Absalom and maybe he's uh, uh, talked to other Israelites and they have told him that you are the rightful uh, king who is to come after your father is going to be his uh, for after he's uh, died, so he's preparing himself. And the words that he's speaking here are very dangerous. We have read this before. And if you, you're, you're very keen and you, you study the Bible, there's another person who said, I will ascend above the throne of God. I will make myself great. I will do this. I will, I will. And you guys know how that ends. Anytime people say, you know, I will. I will, you know, rise above the throne of God and I will be king. That was his downfall. That was Lucifer. And this young man says, I will be king. He exalted himself, the Bible says and he prepared a way. And his father had not rebuked him at any time by saying, why have you done so? He was also a very good looking. His mother has born him after Absalom, so, which means there were age mates with uh, Absalom. But again, this little details that God writes for us, maybe they're necessary or, I don't know, he was very handsome. <laughs> he was a good looking. That is, you know, he shows up and he's paraded people before him and he, he comes in the chariot or there the, 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 the are times limousine and he stands and everyone is like, yeah, this, this is the guy. This is the good looking guy we want. We, we don't care whether there's brain inside. We, we, we don't care about those other details. You know, he will give us, um, you know, 50 bob, 200 bob each and whatever. These other guys who are not cute, they won't give us money, though they speak sense, right? So let's just go to whoever gives us money and whoever is good looking. That woman, he said, is very beautiful. And this man also is very good looking, very handsome. But you see, as the Bible says, David is a man after God's own heart. That is it is true in many, many aspects. Just one aspect that made David to go down the hill was his parenting. His parenting was not good. This is the son that was born to him and up until now, you know what the Bible says? His father never rebuked him one time. Think about that as a parent. You've never told your child no. <laughs> You've never spanked them one time. You've never cautioned them for anything. Not one time. His father had never rebuked him at any time saying, why have you done so? This was a very bad parenting. 
And you know many people have uh, gotten this even today. You say, no, I can't tell my child, no. They, they cry for their phones, your phones you give to them. They cry for things in the supermarket you give to them. They cry without reason, you're like, oh, baba, oh, mommy. They are not baba, mommy. They will frustrate you when they are of age. If you do nothing about it right now, in the future, you'll be the one crying. You know the Bible says that you spare the what? <laughs> you know, the kids have a way of twisting it. So that it, it, it's the same words, but they're twisted. So that you give them what they want, a, you, 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 you spare the rod, and you do what? You spoil the child. <laughs> But give me what I want. Spare the child and spoil the rod. That is what they think. If you do that as a parent, in the future, you will reap the harvest in full. And when it comes in full measure, you would want to run away from people, but it won't be. Possible. So, those that are parents, please uh, take care of those details. Be a parent. When it's time to say no, it's no. It's time to sleep, it's time to sleep. It's time to spunk, it's time to spunk. You know, by using a rod, you're driving out fully inside these children. If you don't, you're making it stay in there. Then he conferred with Joab, this is Adonijah, the son of Zeruiah, and Abiathar, the priests, and they followed and helped Adonijah. But Zadok, the priest, Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, Nathan, the prophet, Shimei, Ray, and the mighty men who belonged to David were not with Adonijah. And Adonijah sacrificed sheep and oxen and fattened cattle by the stone of Zuhela, which is by an regal. He also invited all his brothers, the king's sons, and all the men of Judah the king's servants, but he did not invite Nathan the prophet, Benaiah the mighty man, or Solomon his brother. So Nathan spoke to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, saying, Have you heard that Adonijah the son of Agath, the son, uh, has become king? And David, our Lord, does not know it. Come, please, let me now give you some advice that you may save your own life and the life of your son Solomon. Now, whatever the, 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 the prophet is doing here is pretty remarkable. Because when a kingdom has to be established, then you have to take out the enemies, the enemies of the kingdom. Which means if Adonijah becomes the king, then it means Zadok and Nathan and Solomon, they become automatically the enemies of the kingdom and they'll be wiped away. So for a kingdom to be established, you must take care of the enemies. And the prophet is telling her that if this happens, then it means you and your son, you automatically become the enemies 
of the kingdom, and you know what? You'll be wiped out. So something has to be done. Go immediately to the king, to King David, and say to him, Did you not, my lord, O king, swear to your maidservant, saying, Assuredly, your son Solomon shall reign after me, and he shall sit on the throne. Why then has Adonijah become king? Then while you are still talking, there with the king, I also will come in after you and confirm your words. In other words, another thing that he's doing, that he's making this statement firm by the witnesses of one or two people, a matter is established. He knows that is, that is the right thing, but he wants David to know that this matter is established with more than two witnesses or more than one. So he goes to, he, he gives this advice. So Bathsheba went into the chamber of the king. Now the king was very old and Abishur the Shunammite was serving the king. And I'm, I'm I'm wondering right there, but Sheba was his wife. Why didn't they bring Bathsheba to warm the king? This, this men are crafty here. Well, whatever. And Bathsheba bowed and did homage to the king. Then the king said, what is your wish? Then she said to him, My Lord, you swore by the Lord your God to your maidservant, saying, As surely Solomon your son shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne. So now look, Adonijah has become king, and now my Lord the king, you do not know about it. He has sacrificed oxen and fattened cattle and sheep in abundance and has invited all the sons of the king, Abiathar the priest and Joab the commander of the army. But Solomon, your servant, he has not invited. And as for you, my lord, O king, the eyes of all Israel are on you that you should tell them who will sit on the throne of the king after him. Otherwise, it will happen when my lord the king rests with his fathers that I and my son Solomon will be counted as offenders. And you know what the offenders will be done to? They'll be killed. And just then, while she was now still talking with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. So they told the king, saying, here is Nathan the prophet. And when he came before the king, he bowed before the king with his faith to the ground. And Nathan said, my lord, O king, have you said I don't neither shall reign after me and he shall sit on my throne? For he has gone down today and has sacrificed oxen and fattened cattle and sheep in abundance and has invited the king's sons and the commander of the army and Abiathar the, the priest. And look, they are eating and drinking before him and they say, long live King Adonijah. This is a self-appointed prophet, the self-appointed king, and people are singing to him, long live the king. And I want to remind us for a principle that is very important in worship. Many a times when, you know, the, the Israelites would go 
for these feasts, or they would prepare feasts. These were part of the worship that they rendered to God. And think about it. This was the hundreds and thousands of animals being slaughtered in a day for a feast, a celebration. You know, do, do you think God was swallowing these animals, this meat? No, 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 no. If the sacrifice was offered in a manner that is worthy and the smoke would go up, then God would receive it as a sweet fragrance before his presence, something that is pleasant to him. If it wasn't pleasant that this thing has been corrupted, then it is, it is not accepted before the presence of God. Back when we began uh, and we were learning about Eli, you know the sons of Eli, what happened? You know, they took advantage of this meat and then they were selling it to people and other bad things they do. Actually, that prophecy is going to be fulfilled as we're going to read here. Abiathar is the last man in the priesthood of that lineage of Eli. After him, no more. But the aspect of worship is that when we come before the Lord, we are supposed to be joyful as we are offering sacrifices to the Lord. Many times, have you looked at people when we are, you know, singing and worshiping the Lord? Some people are totally sad. <laughs> you look at people's faces like, wow, wow. That's tremendous. How are you joyful in that expression? <laughs> it's supposed to be a joyful thing, a joyful sacrifice we are offering to the Lord. When they did offer this, you know, peace uh, offerings and whatever sacrifice they would offer before the Lord, they would be happy about it, that they're doing this for the Lord. So please, be happy when you're worshiping the Lord. <laughs> Don't frown before the presence of God. It's like all the, the greeters at the door, they're, you know, they're spraying lemon on your faces. You're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> so be happy in the presence of God. Long live the king. But he has not invited me, your servant, nor Zadok the priest, nor Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, nor your servant Solomon. These people who have been uh, segregated, these people automatically they will become the enemies of this kingdom if at all it is established. But you know also, at this time, when Solomon is now being introduced here, Solomon is a teenager. Very young man. Has this thing been done by my Lord the King? He's asking, verses 27. And you have not told your servant who should sit on the throne of my Lord the King after him. Why are they saying, you know, after him, after him? They know this guy is about to die. <laughs> He's of age. He's going to go soon. Then King David answered and said, Call Bathsheba to me. So she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king took an oath and said, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life from every distress. We pause right there a little bit. It says, the Lord lives who has redeemed my life from every distress. I don't know where people got the idea that when you get born again, distress and suffering will never come your way. 
I don't know where we got that idea from. Because as we go through the Bible, we see a lot of sufferings in the people who are called by God's name. They have gone through a lot of suffering. They have gone through things that would make them actually, you know, things that would have killed them before time. Look at David. He was always on the run. The king wanted to kill him. Their enemies always scheming for David, but they never did. And David is saying, as the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life from every distress? The Lord has been merciful. Just as I swore to you by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Assuredly, Solomon, your son, shall be king after me, and he shall sit on my throne in my place, so I certainly will do this day. You know, the things that the enemy meant for evil, God turns them for good. Always throughout the scripture. David is going to die soon. David has not called his people in the chambers and said, hey, I, I, my days are numbered, but I want you guys to know for sure that before I go, Solomon is going to be making an announcement before the, the king's servant and everyone to know that. He's not done that, but now when a bad thing has happened, that someone else is exalting himself to be king illegally, and David now says, no, this thing is not going to tarry. I am going to do it today. Turning things around. You know, the, it's like what God does. <laughs> turning tables. He's a master pro of turning tables. Every time. So I certainly will do this today. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and paid homage to the king and said, let my lord the king live forever. They say this live forever, but they know he's going to die soon though. And king, king David said, call to me Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah, the son of Je Jehoiada. So they came before the king. And the king also said to them, Take with you the servants of your Lord, and have Solomon, my son, ride on my own mule and take him down to Gihon. So he called the priest, he called the prophet, and he called the commander. The same way the other guys did also. But now the difference is Solomon, this teenage boy or teenage man, he's riding on the king's mule. Those times when a king would ride on a mule and he would be seen, it meant he comes in peace. He comes in peace. You remember when the, the, whatever we call the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ with his, the tearful entry? He rides on a donkey. But you know what? When he returns, he'll be upon a horse. He'll be a man of war. Judgment. So Solomon will be riding on the mule. There, let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him king over Israel and blow the horn and say, long live King Solomon. Then you shall come up after him and he shall come and sit on my throne and he shall be king in my place for I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and Judah. 
Benaiah the son of Jehoiada answered the king and said, Amen to that, brother. <laughs> uh, this mighty warrior said, Amen. You have done right. Amen. This is accurate. May the Lord God of my Lord, the king, say so too. As the Lord has been with my Lord, the king, even so may he be with Solomon and make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord, King David. <laughs> you, so there's a time when women sang a song to David after the death of Goliath. Do you guys remember? <laughs> David has killed thousands and Solomon has only killed hundreds. That did not rest well with Saul. But now this guy, you see what he's saying? That make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord King David. <laughs> King David did, did not say, hey, what did he just say? <laughs> what did he just say? Pretty remarkable, pretty humble guy. I love David. So Zadok, the priest, Nathan, the prophet, Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the Cherethites, and the Pelethites went down and had Solomon ride on King David's mule and took him to Gihon. So you see the presence of three important officers. The priest, the prophet, and the king are the same place. You guys have read the book of Hebrew. We have a man there who fulfills all these things perfectly. He became our high priest, the man Jesus Christ, fulfilling the kingdom that we longed for we never saw it, but he came to help us find this kingdom. He's the perfect king, he's the perfect priest, and he is the perfect prophet. A man, Jesus Christ, who came to reunite us with God. There's a beautiful image painted here. Then Zadok the priest took a horn of oil from the tabernacle and anointed Solomon. And they blew the horn, and all the people said, Long live the king. And the, all the people went up after him. And the people played the flutes and rejoiced with great joy, so that the earth seemed to split with their sound. Wow. This is now how we ought to praise our king. With resounding voices that when people hear like the earth is shaking. And what is happening? Because these people are praising the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I wish that that would be said amongst the people of God today that that group of people will praise God and their resounding voices are shaking the environment, are shaking the neighborhood, shaking everything around it. And do you know that when God's praises goes up, the enemy trembles? Yes, he does. Because the people who encamped against this, we're going to hear what they're going to do. Then now Adonijah and all the guests who were with him heard it as they finished eating. And Joab heard the sound of the horn. He said, why is the city in such noisy uproar? While he was still speaking, 
there came Jonathan, the son of Abiathar the priest, and Adonijah said to him, come in, for you are a prominent man and brings good news. Then Jonathan answered and said to Adonijah, nope, <laughs> good news, not today. Not today. Our Lord, King David, has made Solomon king. Is this supposed to be good news or bad news? <laughs> it is good news for the larger Israel. It is bad news for these enemies who are exalting themselves. The king has sent with him Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, the Cherethite, and the Pelethites. And they have made him ride on the king's mule. So Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet has anointed him king at Gihon. And they have gone up from there rejoicing so that the city is in uproar. This is the noise that you have heard. <laughs> in other words, he's saying, hey, deal with the information that I just gave you. Were you looking for good news or bad news? You choose whether it's good or bad. I've just given it to you. Also, Solomon sits on the throne of the kingdom. In other words, this um, Adonijah, in his mind, is saying, He, man, <laughs> this is gone. He was riding on a mule. He's sitting on the throne. He's been anointed by the priests and the prophets. And we have this David's mighty man are present. So you cannot go there and take him out. Not easy. This is not good. It's not looking good for them. And moreover, the king's servants have gone to bless our Lord, King David, saying, may the Lord make the name of Solomon better than your name. This thing, I don't know why, they're just better than, better than, better than. <laughs> better than your name. And may he make his throne greater than your throne. Then the king bowed himself on the bed. Also the king said, Thus, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has given one to sit in my throne this day while my eyes see it. In other words, this is a joy for me to see that one of my own has become king while I still breathe. While I still breathe. This was good news for him. So, all the guests who were with Adonijah were afraid and rose and each one went his way. <laughs> you know, have you read somewhere in the Bible where it says the enemy, they'll come in one way and there was scatter. <laughs> they came all together. One place. Now, there is scatter. <laughs> the Lord has a way of making these things happening. Why? You give God his due praises. He walks behind the scene for your good. He walks for your good. Would you trust the Lord that he's working things out? That he knows the end from the beginning? 
him being God who knows ahead of time, he knows that the, this is what people scheme, this is what they, they are planning to do. But the words of the Lord remain steadfast. He is a faithful God. These people, they came one way, they went different many ways, and they went sorrowful. They were afraid. Now Adonijah was afraid of Solomon. So he arose and went and took hold of the horn of the altar. What about this holding of the, the horn in the altar? This, we're going to see it even, um, Joab is going to do it too. This was a culture that was never instituted by God to the children of Israel. As they interacted with other nations, they picked up things, and this was one of them that they picked. That it happened that if you had um, done something wrong, and you're remorseful about it, and you're looking for mercy, people would run to the altar and hold the horn of the altar and the present priest would spare them because they have run to the mercy seat. They have run a place where their life cannot be taken away. So Adonijah, because they have been practicing this, something that was not instituted by God, but oh well, they do it anyways. He runs there, supposing that when Solomon would hear this, then his life would be spared. So he holds the horns of the altar. And it was told Solomon, saying, Indeed, Adonijah is afraid of the king, of King Solomon. For look, he is taking hold of the horn of the altar, saying, let King Solomon answer me today, and today that he will not put his servant to death with the sword. Then Solomon said, if he proves himself a worthy man, not one hair of him shall fall to the earth. But if wickedness is found in him, he shall die. <laughs> I love this young king. He's just got the job and he's not playing around. <laughs> he's a serious fella. We're going to see too soon, next week, Lord granting that this is not going to be the case of this running vagabond, Adonijah. He's not running there so that he will be spared because he's genuine. He's scheming for things. He's scheming for things. But rightfully, I love what Solomon just said. Solomon said, if he proves himself a worthy man. So there is what you say, and there is what will prove what you say at the end of the day. You, people can say things. In the heat of the moment, people would just say things. Oh, I will do this, I will do this, I will do this. And when things quiet down, they don't follow up to do one of those things they say they're going to do. So King Solomon sent them to bring him down from the altar. And he came and fell down before the king, before King Solomon. And Solomon Say to him, go to your house. 
we, we, we have nothing to discuss right now. Just go to your house. Why? Because he wants this man to prove himself. If he does not prove himself, we're going to see what will happen. But as for now, Solomon is kind. The king is merciful. I mean, how many times have we been like Adonijah? Because it, seems, it feels horrible when we read this about him. But read yourself in his life. You will find yourself there nearly daily, nearly every time, that your thoughts are not right before the Lord that you're scheming for things, that you want things for yourself. You're proclaiming goodness for yourself. You're saying things you, you shouldn't have said. You're touching things you shouldn't have touched. And because the Lord is merciful, you know what he's, he's done to many of us or all of us? He said, hey, go search your house. Go search your house. Go make things straight. That is what our king is calling us to do tonight. Go search. Go home. Go think about it. Do you think he doesn't know? No, he knows it perfectly well. He knows when our repentance is for real or it's fake. He knows it. But tonight, friends, if you would hear these words from our Lord Jesus, say, hey, go search your house. What would you do? Would you go back and say, hey, God, I have sat and found wickedness terrible wickedness within me and I ask that you pardon me. Would you cry for God's mercy or would you continue in your rebellion? Would you continue in hypocrisy, creating a show, making a face? I, I don't know what the king is calling you to do. Is the king and priest and the, the sinner's ransom. That is who he is. And he's calling unto me. He's calling unto you tonight. Don't say, oh, I've served the Lord for, you know, five months, for 10 years, for whatever time. It doesn't matter. Our hearts are wicked beyond measure. Who can know it? If there's something hidden in your heart, take it before the Lord. Take it before the Lord. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Oh Lord God, we thank you. You are our king, our priest, and you are the sinner's ransom. You bought us at a price. And I pray, O oh God, that we know if we search our hearts that we have dealt treacherously with your grace that has been poured, that has been revealed to us. And I pray tonight that as we think about your word, as we think about these principles that we learn from the men of old, that will not be found going the same direction. Puffing ourselves up, wanting things that would just bring glory to us and not glory to God. Offering sacrifices that are not accepted before you. Doing things we should not do going back to bondage when you have given us so much freedom. 
Lord, help us. And it even in our time of worship, I pray that it will be a time of rejoicing, a time where we, 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 we bring our hearts, we bring everything before you with a heart that is happy and glad for the many blessings you have blessed us with. We know for sure, even the things that the enemy meant for evil, you have turned them for our good. What a wonderful God you are. We thank you, God. And as we disperse in fellowship tonight, we ask for your hands of blessing upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you, church. Have a wonderful evening, and thank you for coming.